You got a stash of intel that you refused to share with my agents. If we were in possession of such a computer, and I'm not confirming that we are, it would be a foreign intelligence matter, not a law enforcement matter. So you do have the hard drive? I don't know how you reach that. How would you know if it was a law enforcement matter or a foreign intelligence matter if you haven't looked at the hard drive? If we did have any intelligence whatsoever, it would be for us to decide how best to use it before you do what you always do, go around the globe arresting people and putting them on trial, before you blow a possible gold mine of information and render it utterly useless. That was a clip from The Looming Tower, a new 10-part miniseries based on the Pulitzer Prize winning book written by our next guest, Lawrence Wright. Lawrence is also an executive producer of the new series. And Lawrence, as you know, uh, along with just about everybody else who cares about foreign policy and American politics, I'm a huge fan of, uh, of The Looming Tower and have been. I can't believe it's been over a decade now and so that, that uh, since you released it. And so... That leads to the first question. What does a looming tower teach us in 2018 that we didn't know in 2006? I guess the lesson of this series is that divided we failed. The division between our intelligence agencies was so profound. And in my opinion, had they been able to cooperate or willing to cooperate, the plot to afford 9-11 could have been stopped. But it was not. And it's because of that internal division that was both institutional and personal uh, that the plot was allowed to proceed. And uh, the consequences of that kind of division are really evident today. So I think that you know, it resonates with us now, I believe. Yeah, and you know, it was remarkable. If you talk to CIA agents, the open contempt they had for uh, FBI agents and, and vice versa. Has that improved over the past decade? Oh, it has. Uh, the intelligence agencies have been reorganized, and we now have the National Counterterrorism Center, where they're forced to cooperate with each other. Our relations with foreign services are much improved. But the disparagement of our intelligence agencies by some partisan figures has been very discouraging to me. Isn't Peter Skarsgård fabulous? <laughs> yes, he Don't is. You say, he's wonderful. You know I saw parts one and two. Yeah. Uh, the, the series, act, we, we begin with the embassy bombings in 1998. Yes. And um, it's interesting because Americans on 9-11 thought that this attack came out of the blue. Yes. But America had been under attack for three years. Uh, you know, the 224 people were killed in, in those embassy bombings in East Africa. 150 people were blinded by the flying glass. And then in October of 2000, the USS Cole was bombed in, in Yemen. Yes. And 17 American sailors were killed. And this is in the height of the presidential election. And during the uh, debates, not a single question is posed about terrorism. So it wasn't on Americans' mind until it no. came they were to New York. Yeah. I'm curious, what's the experience like as an author watching your book turned into a, a basically a Hollywood production? Uh, do you have input on, on casting, on the plot? Do they just sort of take it and run with it? How does it work? Well, I had a lot of influence. I'm a producer, and uh, I, I wanted to introduce the cast to the kind of people that they were going to be writing about, uh, and uh, the writers as well. So I took the writers to the FBI, and I took them to Washington and introduced them to Dick Clark and a a bunch of former CIA operatives, so they get uh, familiar with that world. And uh, sketch have worked with the producers and to sketch out the arc of the season. So I felt very engaged by it. But the thing that made me, I'd been reluctant for years to see the looming tower uh, treated in a, you know, as a movie or a television series, and, but I, I realized it was going to be done anyway, and when I decided to try to take control of it, uh, television had changed. You know, now, you know, to have a, 10 episodes with the quality of actors and directors that we were able to get shot in eight countries, that's not the television that I used to know. past. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Uh, Lawrence, my memory of the book was that it focused a lot on the people who plotted the attack, um, on bin Laden and those around him. This seems to focus more on the people who failed to stop the attack. Was that a deliberate shift for television? No, we actually do uh, take a lot of scenes inside the al-Qaeda community, and so we are, we are dealing with that side of the story. Uh, we made a conscious decision not to 
make, for instance, Osama bin Laden a character, although we use documentary footage uh, that we insert into uh, you know, the scenes that we shot so that the, readers, the viewers can have that sense of reality. But uh, you know, we, we spend a lot of time in the Al-Qaeda community. Yeah, Lawrence, let me, uh, let me just ask you in closing, what, what lesson do you have for, for authors, for writers, for journalists? Uh, when it comes to reporting, what, what was it about the looming tower that made everybody from, let's say, Dick Cheney on the right to his most strident opponents on the left, uh, what made them uh, buy the book and hand it to their friends like I did to three or four of my friends and say, read this book? If you want to understand what's going on right now, you have to read this book. Why did your book seem to break through uh, on the most contentious issue of the day uh, and break through to people on both sides of the ideological divide? Well, thank you for your question, Joe. I, I suppose that um, when I try to report, I, I, you know, every reporter is supposed to speak to as many people as possible. And, and I spoke to 600 people when I was preparing uh, The Looming Tower. And uh, that I call that horizontal reporting. But there's another axis that I call vertical reporting, which is within that universe of 600 people, some are more candid, more knowledgeable, and, and uh, more insightful. And I go back to those people again and again. So if you have those two axes, the, uh, you know, you're going to get a broad consensus, but the vertical axis is more about understanding Understanding. And so if you bore in deep with certain people to try to understand why they joined Al-Qaeda, for instance, or, you know, why did we fail to stop 9-11, some people are really more useful. And I think in that sense, you get the, you know, the broader view of it, but you also tend to have a way of boring into the story that you otherwise couldn't do. All right. Well, Lawrence, thank you so much. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.